Hi everyone, I'm Odaya Dulemi from Malar Dalin University in Sweden. I'm going to present our work at ICPE 2021. The title of the work is Loops, a holistic control approach for resource management in cloud computing. The motivation of the work, cloud-based applications are served through a pooling of heterogeneous physical machines hosted on cloud data centers. A modern cloud data center support the concept of virtualization, which comes with many benefits, but it may result in contention among the co-hosted VMs for resources, lack of resources required to serve the application. This leads to performance degradation, service being very slowly or unresponsive sometimes, SLI violation and user dissatisfaction. Thus, to ensure a specific service level objective, there is a need for a dynamic tool for assigning computing resources to each VM based on the runtime state of the target environment. To this end, we presented loops, which is a multi-loop control approach to allocate resources to VMs based on the service level agreement requirements and the runtime conditions. The system model loops is composed of the following three control levels. They are resource tuning level, RTL, virtual machine level, VML, physical machine level, PML, and one essential unit called monitoring and measurement unit, MMU. Each level has a controller. The controllers are separated but they complement each other by coordinating with MMU. They receive commands from MMU to trigger the required actions periodically. A tailor-made controller is proposed with each level to regulate contention among VMs, to reallocate resources when required, and to migrate VMs from one host to another. The three levels work together to meet the required service level agreement. As I mentioned in the previous slide, a cloud data center can host a set of physical machines, PMs. Each PM can host a number of virtual machines, PMs, and they produce a specific throughput. Loops, the proposed approach, is dealing with the VMs. The first level, RTL, tunes the resources that are already allocated to the VMs. It adjusts shared resources inside each physical machine to regulate the contention per VM. RT controller here can modify three variables for implementing the amount of resources each VM receives from the PM during contention. They are shares, limits, and reservations and this is done according to four control strategies. The second level, VML and via its VM controller, performs vertical scaling by adding or removing resources or perform horizontal scaling by adding or removing VMs to the system. The third level, PML and via its controller, performs the dynamic VM placement from one host to another within the data center. And when it comes to the MMU, which is the novel part of this work, it serves as a synchronizer of the three control layers. Its main functions are check the status of all running VMs and monitor some metrics, such as the VM and PM throughput to take some measurements from them and accordingly coordinate the task of the three management layers by issuing requests to their controllers to do the necessary resource management actions. As we can see here, loops monitor the throughput resulted from PMs and PMs and from the whole system and accordingly it tunes some variables represented here as R1, R2, and R3. The details of the 
four control strategies used in level one or RTL level. The algorithms used in VML and PML were discussed with more details in the paper. Model formulation. In loops, MMU identifies a decision vector D. D consists of three variables, L1, L2, L3, as we can see here. This is to demonstrate the relationship between intervals and the activation time of the three levels. Uh, these intervals are represented as cycles. L1, L2, L3 are decision variables to be set to uh, 0 or 1 by MMU, and this is uh, done at each cycle. Thus, and uh, as explained in this figure, the activation of the three controllers is triggered by the or by a finite state automaton uh, that is described in five tuple, where the first the first tuple represents the states here. We have four states in the system. Uh, this is uh, steady state is M MU or uh, the state where 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 we don't need any uh, we don't need to take any action. Uh, RT controller represent level one. VM controller represent level two. PM controller represent uh, level three. Uh, the second tuple uh, is a finite set of alphabet symbols. Uh, we have uh, these uh, alphabet symbols 000, 000, 100, and extra as we can see here. The third tuple uh, is a set of uh, transition functions. So, for example, if we want to go from one state uh, to another, uh, using a specific alphabet sample, we can go from this state to uh, PM control state uh, if and only if MMU trigger this uh, vector. The the fourth tuple represents the start state, which is the steady state. F is a set of finite states, and uh, also it is in our system it is the steady state here. More details also uh, uh, is discussed in the paper. The test bed. Loops implemented in PowerShell and the experiment run on a VMware vSphere cloud. As shown in the figure, the job submitted to HT uh, Condor, which is a distributed system used to distribute jobs to, to the VMs in the system and uh, the controllers interact with VMware under the umbrella of MMU in order to take the resource management action. The system model in loops takes the desired throughput as an input and produces the actual throughput as an output. This is the um, desired throughput in black, and the resulted, we can see that the resulted throughput almost match the desired one. This figure shows that different control strategies result in different number of VMs used in order to get the system design goal. The control strategies used in level one also affect the number of VM migration needed to reach our goals. To validate the correctness and effectiveness of loops. We compare it with another approach called multiscalar die by us previously. Actually, we can see the importance of injecting the system with MMU here. So uh, in multiscalar, we uh, needed to wait a few cycles to reach the target throughput, where, whereas in loops, we reach the target directly in the, after the first cycle. Conclusions. Loops enables a more fine-grained management of the available resources and meets the desired metric of cloud-based applications. Its results show a promising performance from different perspectives. For example, um, the resultant throughput, the response to uh, workload change, 
applying different control strategies show uh, the importance of RTL uh, comparing with another approach loops outperforms the other approach and also it works very well in a noisy environment as a future directions we are proposing a new control strategies to be tested in RTL trying different applications to be used and also adding more levels to do uh, different uh, functions to the system Thank you very much.